What's going on YouTube? Thank you for tuning in to another episode of Texas Street Stories. And if you haven't already subscribed, help your boy out and hit the subscribe button. On today's episode, we're going to be talking about Dongle Blast. After a few videos that I made, a subscriber, you know, dropped some knowledge on me. You know, Dongle Blast. Everybody including myself a lot of people were in the, under the impression that Dongo Blast was created somewhere in the 90s uh, due to create they were created to go against the farmers that were in the prison uh, but after talking to the subscriber uh, he dropped his knowledge on me saying that the Tongos were already there you know he's been doing time since the late 80s early 90s you know he belongs to an organization uh so after you know going back and forth in this dialogue uh he made me aware that the tangos were already there from 70s 80s you know they were the hometown you know basically wherever you came from that was your tango you know it was Tango San, San Anto, Tango Houston, Tango Dallas. Basically, wherever city you came from, that was your tango. You know, during the 80s, when the, when the farmers were here going, going to war amongst themselves, trying to get the control of the black market and the Texas prisons or whatever unit they were on, the farmers started getting classified as a security threat group. So in the late 80s, early 90s, all the farmers were getting segregated off the top. So the tangos that had already been there, they seen the power vacuum. So from what I'm getting from the dialogue was that, that these tangos were already there. And when the power vacuum that the building tenders left various members from various tangos created these organizations these farmers to get control of what the building tenders have le left to control so the tangos had been there they seen the they seen the power of the building tenders they seen the power of of the farmers that they were starting to get so they seen these ups and downs of these organizations they seen how they were created how, how they were built how their structure how they were going about carrying their business so the tangos in the early 90s declared themselves as an organization where in where hence that's where the blast comes from the tango blast you know because from what I get from the dialogue was the tangos were already there. That's their hometown. You know, wherever you fell out, that was your tango. You know, and I was, I was not surprised, but uh, I mean, that was good to hear. Because, you know, that's, I was always under the impression that tango was created in the, the 90s. And they were uh, created to go against the farmers. In a way, they did go against the farmers. But the tangos, from what I get the dialogue from the subscriber was... The tangos were already there. They were just waiting their time. So I, I might have had had some little bit of inaccurate information, but you know, these are times before my time. You know, I can only speak on two thousands and current. You know, but he's a person or a convict that did his time late eighties, early nineties. Did his time in seg twenty plus. So he's very knowledgeable and I got to give him credit, you know, accuracy in history is the way to go. So I don't get mad, you know, if, 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 uh, if I say something that's incorrect or inaccurate and somebody says, no, this is the way it was and it makes sense, well, then you have no choice to accept that you made a mistake and you, you said something inaccurate. But just like the comment the subscriber said, you can't always trust what's being written. And that is 100% truth. 
you can't always go by what's written in the documents because they're not really 100% accurate. They're just maybe even not even half of what the, the true story of it is. But this was just a quick video about, you know, the Tango Blast, you know, because a lot of people, even to this day, probably still think that the Tango Blast was created in the 90s and to go against the Famas. But I was wrong. You know, the, the Famas were, I guess, second because the Tangos were already there, you know. And the Tangos had been there with the building tenders, but the building tenders had the power. Once the building tenders left, the Fama started fighting for the power. They started getting locked up. The Tangos were already there from the beginning. Uh, they seen that the vacuum Fama's were getting locked up. And, uh, you know, after having the dialogue with him, it made sense, you know. And he also brought this, he also said this thing as well. You know, when I was when I was locked up, we we kicked it with Tangos. Let me see. I would say we kicked it with Austin, Dallas, Fort Worth, Houston. We even kicked it with Wessels, West Texas. You know, I was in medium custody, and we would all have our tables. But the only other Tango that would be by themselves would be Sananto Tango. They would have their own table, but they would be separate from us. Because let's say if we spread it amongst us, we really didn't invite them and vice versa. So I always wondered, you know, why, you know, what, what's the, why are they like almost like the stepchild of the tango? You know, like they're, they're, they hold their own. Don't get me wrong. They hold their own, but you know, they're not really like. They're tango, you know, they're, they're their tango. But at the same time, you know, they're not, from my experience, when I was in medium custody, it was just, you know, the four cities, and then you had West Texas Wessels, you know, that we, we would be united. We would spread together, you know, we would be united. You know, San Anto Tango was there, but they would be like their own. Not to saying that's that's bad, you know, in a way it's good, you know, because they're they're holding their own weight. You know, they don't need four three, four other groups to be united. And he he brought the comment to me that that the Sananto Tangos they took the nickname Orejones. And and and, and this is the thing that uh, this surprised me, you know, because it, it brought knowledge to me that I didn't have. I, I always thought that they called these guys orejones because they had big ears. You know, and don't get me wrong, some of the dudes that I wasn't meeting custody with did have big ears. So I'm like, no, maybe maybe this, that's just a lot of dudes that come from them. Maybe they just had a lot of big ears and they called them big they, orejones. But I was totally wrong on that one too, you know. My subscribers told me that they called the building tenders that were from San Antonio Orejones you know so the, the the building tenders that were Hispanic were majority from San Antonio so other organizations started calling them people Orejones and now the Tango Orejones run with that so in a way it was it was supposed to be like a a snitch, you know. You got some big ears, you know. You you listening too much, you know. That you, you're listening too much. You tell it. You listening and you tell it. That's where the orejon came from, and I was surprised. You know, that was more knowledge to me because I didn't know that. But once again, you know, he's speaking about the '80s. He knows his time. You know, he's been there. I can't argue that. You know. And that's why I made this channel, you know, to bring awareness, you know, and let people know that Texas as a as a state, as a whole, can hold its own, you know, because I see a lot of people are interested in the California politics and and on that side, on the west west side. But, you know, Texas got this history of politics, you know, even New Mexico got some good history, even Chicago got some good history, you know, 
that's all I'm trying to do. You know, I'm trying to read some stories. And hopefully some of y'all find it interesting and some of y'all might not. But, you know, that's all I'm trying to do. You know, hopefully, you know, I can get my subscriber on here. Or maybe I can get some more further dialogue with them that, you know, we, we can get this channel growing and get him on here as a guest. So he can tell us how it really is in his version. You know, uh, but yeah, you know, this is just, just like a, a quick update about Thongo Blast. You know, uh, you know, because hopefully a lot of people will probably still think that the organization was created in the 90s. You know, but like I said in the video, I was wrong, you know, but it's good. You know, sometimes it's you got to admit you were wrong. And then, you, you know, when they bring you the information that makes sense, you know, you really can't argue it, you know. So hopefully, thank you for tuning in for another episode of Texas Street Stories. And I hope y'all like it. Uh, it's a short video. You know, everybody already knows about Thongo Blast. You know, but everybody was under the impression that the, it was created in the 90s to go against the farmers. But I was incorrect. They were, they've been there. They were, they were just waiting their time. They seen the power the building tenders had. They seen the power the farmers were having. And they said, hey, we've been here the longest. I think it's about time for us to stand up. And I guess in the early 90s, they blasted off and they became Tango Blast. So ever since the 90s, you can say they became a 40 organization, but they've been in the work. They've been there. So you can say that they're probably one of the longest organizations here in Texas. Do uh, according according to my subscriber, and uh, this goes out to Ralph, you know my subscriber. You know, thank you for the knowledge. Much much respect to you and your organization. You know, uh, and I end this video with uh, always just be yourself. You know, just be yourself. You know, because this channel right now is just about you know stories. But later on, when it, when it's able to do stuff, you know. It's more about helping the youth, not, not making these same mistakes that a lot of us had. You know, a lot of us have kids, you know, a lot of us have sons, and a lot of us don't want our sons to go the same road that we did, you know? We don't want our sons to go experience it. I think a lot of us have already done enough dirt that our kids shouldn't even have to even think about doing any dirt. So I, I'll end this message. Just be yourself, you know, because at the end of the day, you're going to end up being in a place, end up doing something that you regret. And at the end of the day, you could have avoided it just by being yourself. Ain't nothing wrong with being yourself. Just be yourself.